Being concerned about the environment has been woke since before that term even existed. Not only does this let people know you're losing the shoreline on your oceanfront property, but it signals that you care for the planet and its inhabitants. Moral posturing aside, it's the environmental impacts of animal agriculture that helps films like The Game Changers convert its viewers to vegans. But are the consequences of animal agriculture as bad as they make them seem? Or can we use livestock to improve the earth and feed impoverished nations? An early claim that the film makes is that all that protein that you get when you eat a steak or a hamburger, where did it come from? It came from the plants that the cow ate. Implying that we can meet our protein needs through plants alone. The largest study to compare the nutrient intake of meat eaters with plant eaters showed that the average plant eater not only gets enough protein, but 70% more than they need. If this is true, it's not from the same plants that we feed to animals. 86% of a cow's diet is inedible to humans, including the byproducts of monocropping. Cattle convert these byproducts into edible, nutrient-dense foods. Something to consider when they say, All protein originates in plants. Cows, pigs, and chickens, it turns out, are just the middlemen. Because without these middlemen, most of these byproducts would go to waste, eroding the soil and releasing carbon into the atmosphere. Instead, we can use the waste from these same animals to restore the ecosystem. Alan Savory is an ecologist. Fossil fuels, carbon, coal and gas, are by no means the only thing that is causing uh, climate change. He noticed that something called desertification is accelerating global warming. Desertification is a fancy word for land that is turning to desert. This is a major problem because not only does desertification release carbon into the atmosphere, but it erodes soil so that new plants can't grow back and remove that carbon from the atmosphere. Generally what you see in green is not desertifying and what you see in brown is. The regions that Alan highlights match a lot of the areas where the Game Changers show we're using too much pasture and cropland for livestock. So what causes desertification? We know that desertification is caused by livestock, overgrazing the plants, leaving the soil bare, and giving off methane. Which, if accurate, would confirm the Game Changers theory that livestock damage the environment. And what is the single biggest source of habitat destruction? It's the livestock sector. But is this true? Alan says, We were once just as certain that the world was flat. We were wrong then, and we are wrong again. There are still people today who believe that we're wrong about the Earth being round. They're called flat earthers. And there are still people today who believe livestock caused desertification. They're called vegans. Alan and his team learned their lesson the hard way. They started removing humans and livestock from the land, but their problem was only getting worse. Now, no livestock were involved, but suspecting that we had too many elephants, we shot 40,000 elephants to try to stop the damage and it got worse, not better. Not the best action if you care about animal well-being, a topic I'll cover in a future video. Loving elephants as I do, that was the saddest and greatest blunder of my life, and I will carry that to my grave. Through his failed efforts, Alan realized that the animals he thought were causing the problem could actually be the solution. What we had failed to understand, the soil and the vegetation, developed with very large numbers of grazing animals. These animals eat the vegetation, fertilizing the soil with their manure and reversing the erosion. Now, looking at this grassland of ours that has gone dry, what could we do to keep that healthy? And bear in mind, I'm talking of most of the world's land now. There is only one option. I repeat to you, only one option left to climatologists and scientists, and that is to do the unthinkable and to use livestock. There is no other alternative left to mankind. Animal agriculture has such a large geographic footprint because farmers are using animals to graze on lands and keep them alive for future generations. When James says, Shifting away from an animal-based diet, if it would free up a total area of land the size of Africa. He must not understand the consequences of turning the entire continent into the Sahara. So yes. Meat, dairy, egg, and fish farming use 83% of the world's farmland, yet provide only 18% of the world's calories. But as third grade geology reminds us, just because soil is available doesn't mean that you can use it to grow crops. 60% of the land used to raise cattle alone is not suitable for plant agriculture. Without livestock, this number would be way higher, just like it is in many parts of the world, including the Horn of Africa, where impoverished nations struggle to feed themselves. We now have pastoralists planning their grazing to mimic nature, 
and openly saying it is the only hope they have of saving their families and saving their culture. 95% of that land can only feed people from animals. So yes, a very large area of land is responsible for producing very few calories, but this is arid land that is not suitable for crop production. Is this film suggesting that we should let these impoverished nations starve just in order to have less animal agriculture? I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, if that's what you can call it in this situation, and say that they're just using a big scary number to trick people into thinking that animal agriculture is worse for the environment than it really is. Or maybe they're only talking about increasing the calories in first world nations. But with 70% of the US population either overweight or obese, eating fewer calories with a higher nutritional value should probably be a national prescription. And when the film says, With more than 70 billion animals consumed globally each year, Growing animal feed requires vast amounts of land, making it one of the leading drivers of deforestation. We can use these same animals to solve the problems they're reported to cause. But if what they're recommending is reducing the footprint of animal agriculture at any cost, this can easily be accomplished. We'll just turn some grasslands into deserts and replace them with factory farms. But if they're concerned about the fact that In the United States, for example, farm animals produce nearly 50 times more waste per year than its entire human population. Concentrating animal waste in areas where we can't use it to fertilize crops seems unwise. Unlike visiting my Wise Guides profile, where you can get custom diet and workout programs tailored for your goals. Or transitioning to holistically managed and regenerative farming. Gabe Brown is a regenerative farmer. He says, In regenerative agriculture, you have to be able to use the power of observation. You have to look at the landscape and see, what's this soil trying to tell me? An important question to ask, because losing topsoil can lead to natural disasters and accelerate climate change. The UN estimates that we have just 60 years of topsoil remaining, and when we run out of topsoil, the food system will collapse. Fortunately, we can make some changes to prevent this from happening. Don't want to till the soil any more than we have to. Least amount of chemical disturbance means we got to cut back on the synthetics, whether it be fertilizer, pesticides, fungicides. All of those have negative impacts to the soil ecosystem. These chemicals and processes are required for growing monocrops like corn and soy. Instead, we can replace these monocrops with biodiversity using livestock to till and fertilize the land. Where in nature do you find monocultures? Usually only where man put them. Yet look what we're doing in production agriculture today. We're seeding monoculture cash crops. That all has a negative impact on the ecosystem. So we want to add diversity. Regenerative farming works by mimicking nature. In nature, wherever you find plants, you'll find animals eating those plants. We need to get animals out onto the grasslands, but then we need to graze those grasslands in a way that will proliferate the health of rangelands. And in nature, wherever you find animals grazing on grasslands, you'll find predators eating those animals. Without livestock, regenerative farming is not possible. And without meat eaters, Raising livestock is not profitable. Given this situation, even vegans should be happy that humans are at the top of the food chain. So, when you hear about three quarters of all the agricultural land in the world is used for livestock production, and it imposes a huge cost on biodiversity. It's because more than half of this is grazing land, which actually improves biodiversity. According to the World Wildlife Foundation, regenerative farming could increase crop production by $1.4 trillion without using any more land. But can regenerative farming completely eliminate greenhouse gases? Because according to the Game Changers, the livestock sector is responsible for 15% of global man-made emissions. 15% doesn't sound too high, but when you hear that's about the same as all the emissions from all the forms of transport in the world, all the planes, trains, cars, vans and ships, all added up. You might have some concerns, like whether this guy has been spending too much time around cow pastures, because the methane is clearly starting to affect his cognitive abilities. 15% are the emissions from the entire animal agriculture supply chain, where it only includes direct emissions from transportation. This means that with animal agriculture, they include everything from raising the food that the animal eats, to butchering it and putting it on your plate, 
where with transportation, they're only including the stuff that comes out of the tailpipe. A 2017 report from the Environmental Protection Agency shows that transportation in the US is responsible for 29% of greenhouse gas emissions, while all agriculture combined accounts for just 9%. If the entire US animal agriculture sector was immediately converted to plants, this would only reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 2.6%. Strange thing to forget considering that this was published in the well-renowned journal PNAS. I guess they were too busy fixating on a different kind of penis. Another thing they forgot to mention is that without animal agriculture, more desertification would occur, which leads to greenhouse gas emissions. When we damage soils, you give off carbon. Carbon goes back to the atmosphere. Animals prevent these carbon emissions by consuming the plants before they decompose and release carbon into the atmosphere. But if plant advocates are still adamant that we stop eating these animals, there are alternative methods for removing these dying plants from the ground. We have traditionally used fire. But fire also leaves the soil bare, releasing carbon. And worse than that, burning one hectare of grassland gives off more and more damaging pollutants than 6,000 cars. And we are burning in Africa every single year more than one billion hectares. Not the best action if you're trying to reduce carbon emissions. We justify the burning as scientists because it does remove the dead material and it allows the plants to grow. Or we can use these lands as pastures, raise livestock for impoverished nations and repair the soil while removing carbon from the atmosphere. Implying that animal agriculture is responsible for global warming is almost as deceptive as saying one hamburger is 2,400 liters of embedded water. Which sounds like a lot, but 94% of this is rainwater. A pound of beef requires less water from irrigation than a pound of walnuts or avocados. According to the United States Geological Survey, all animal agriculture combined accounts for just 0.6% of daily water usage. When James says that more than a quarter of humanity's fresh water consumption goes to produce animal foods. He doesn't ask where this water comes from, and he also doesn't ask where it goes, because all water is eventually recycled back into the earth through natural ecological processes, as explained in this video made for children. Just tell your mummy to heat some water. Even when we leave Earth, the International Space Station recycles 90% of its water through technology alone. Professor Johan Rockström says that Meat plays a disproportionately large role in causing this overuse of fresh water. 25% of the rivers in the world no longer reach the ocean because we're taking out so much water to produce animal feed. But if we continue monocropping, we'll drain even more rivers and lakes. Depleted soil can't hold the water from rainfall. It'll be flooded one day and then bone dry the next. Alan shows us some land that is just come through four months of very good rains and it's going into the long dry season. But as you can see, all of that rain, almost all of it, has evaporated from the soil. Their river is dry despite the rain just having ended and we have 150,000 people on almost permanent food aid. While the holistically managed land will retain water. Now let's go to our land on the same day with the same rainfall and look at that. Our river is flowing and healthy and clean, it's fine. The production of grass, shrubs, trees, wildlife, everything is now more productive. And we did that by increasing the cattle and goats 400% but before we began, our land looked like that. So is animal agriculture bad for the environment? Well, it certainly can be if it's not managed properly. But same with plant agriculture. Just about everything that this film suggests will make the problems worse, not better. If we completely eliminate animals from our diets, we'll require way more monocropping, which will deplete the soil and potentially lead to a global food shortage. Instead, we now have the knowledge and resources to raise livestock in a way that will actually improve the environment. Rather than protesting, environmentalists can prosper by recognizing these problems as opportunities in disguise. Start a holistically managed livestock operation. Make real environmental changes and profit from your efforts. And remember, people will say that they care about the environment. But as Ricky Gervais puts it, Well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, if ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent. If starting your own regenerative farm seems like too much work, maybe that's because you're eating an unhealthy diet. Can you fix this by eating more meat? That's the question I'm going to explore in the next video. I'm also going to follow a carnivore diet for three months while evaluating as many different health metrics as possible to determine how nothing but meat 
impacts my health. Make sure you subscribe to follow along. If you wanna learn more about the topics I covered today, you can find links to the videos and articles in the description below. For now, thank you for watching.